hello dear learners welcome you all in this session hope you all are doing good and taking care of your health today we are going to start an amazing and interesting topic heredity and evolution so after completion of this session you will be able to understand the term heredity describe the transfer of trait from one generation to another generation define important terms like of springs inheritance trait etc describe the reason for variations in different generations as we can see the name of the chapter there are two important terms heredity and evolution what do they mean and what are their importance so let's start with heredity you may hear from your parents or family members that your nose resembles with your mother or color of the eye is like your father or your height is like your grandfather so why you resemble like your parents or grandparents actually this is heredity the next generation has characters similar to the last generation this not limited to human only puppies look like the dog the calf looks similar to the elephant every new generation takes property of the old generation and this is called heredity so we can define heredity as phenomena of inheritance from parents to offspring or progeny before moving forward let's understand some important terms that will be used in this topic inheritance passing on of traits from parents to offspring either through asexual or sexual reproduction gene a unit of heredity which is transfer from a parent to offspring and is held to determine some characters of the offspring trait is a specific character of an organism trait can be inherited or acquired inherited traits are received from parents like complexion hair color etc while acquired traits are developed like skills for example even if your father is a good driver you have to learn the driving the skills do not transfer from parents to offspring progeny or offspring the product of reproduction or the next generation in simple terms the children so these are some important terms that will help you to understand the topic now to move forward have a look at the picture you can see an organism suppose the organism reproduces asexually and produces two offspring you can observe in the first offspring almost all characters are similar instead of one which is different from the parents again in the second offspring all characters are similar instead of one the second generation will have differences that they inherit from the first generation as well as newly created differences what exactly do we mean by similarities and differences we know that a child bears all the basic features of a human being however it does not look exactly like its parents and human population show a great deal of variation and this is heredity for example we all have two eyes like our parents but the color of eye can be different from our parents after years these small variations can make huge changes in the organism and this is called evolution about which we will discuss later depending on the nature of variations different individuals would have different kinds of advantages for example bacteria that can withstand heat will survive better in a heat wave but there may be some bacteria that cannot survive in high temperature think if there is no variation then 
all the bacteria that cannot tolerate heat will die. So, variation is important for survival. Selection of variants by environmental factors form the basic of evolutionary processes. As we know, the reproduction is of two types, sexual and asexual. We can observe more variation in sexual reproduction. Observe the kind of similarities and variations you have with your parents like your height, the color of your hair, skin tone, the shape of your ear and nose etc. Now we will discuss heredity in detail. As we discussed heredity is the transfer of traits, now the question is how these traits are transferred. We know that all living organisms are made up of cells. The cell has many cell organelles, but the important one is the nucleus. The nucleus has thread-like structures. Do you know what they are? Yes, they are known as chromosomes. These thread-like structures have DNA. DNA has genes that are important to discuss. These genes are called the unit of heredity. Genes are responsible for transferring trait from one generation to another. For example, your body has many cells. Each cell has chromosomes and chromosomes have genes. So, there are many genes in your body. These genes are responsible for all your characters like your hair color, skin complexion, height, etc. These informations are coded in your genes. These genes will transfer to your next generation that is your child. Now, on another hand, we have different kind of genes for different characters. Like the genes who decide the skin complexion are different from genes decide the height. The genes work in pair. For example, to decide height, an individual has two pair of genes. Letter T can be used to denote height. The gene with capital T is dominant and can make the individual tall, while the gene with a small t is recessive, represent the dwarf character. So the height will be decided by the pair of genes the individual has. An individual can have three kind of pairs, capital T, capital T, capital T, small t, small t, small t. In the first case, both genes are dominant, so it will make the individual tall. In the second case, the first gene is dominant, so it can again make the individual tall. In the third case, the pair is recessive, so the individual will be dwarf or small. So in this way, genes work in pair. A dominant gene is a gene which defines the trait in presence of another gene. A recessive gene is a gene which can define traits only in presence of another gene. There are two important terms, genotype and phenotype. Genotype means a pattern of gene like capital T, capital T, capital T, small t, small t, small t. While phenotype means the trait in an organism like tall or dwarf. Let's take an example. You can see two pictures, one of a man with dark complexion and another of a woman with fair complexion. The complexion again decided by pair of the gene. Suppose the complexion deciding pair of the genes exists in two forms, capital C and small c. The capital C is dominant and decides dark complexion while small c is recessive and decides the fair complexion. The possible pair of genotypes for men can be capital C, capital C, capital C, small c, while possible genotypes for the woman can be small c, 
small c. Suppose the woman has a small c small c pair and man has a capital C capital C pair. You know that when reproduction takes place, the ova from female and sperms from the male mate and zygote is formed. Only one gene from each pair will come from sperm and ova respectively. So when they reproduce, the gene from the female will be small c, while from male it will be capital C. So the zygote will have genotypes capital C, small c and phenotype as dark or medium. In another case, if the male has capital C, small c pair of the gene and the woman has small c, small c pair, then zygote can have capital C, small c, capital C, small c and small c, small c genotype and medium or fair phenotype respectively. Take another example where both parents are of dark complexion with genotype capital C small c and capital C small c respectively. So when they reproduce, the resultant zygote can have capital C capital C, capital C small c, capital C small c and small c small c genotypes. So there is a possibility that the child can be fair while both the parents are dark. This happens due to the recessive genes. So in this way, the genes work in pair and variation takes place. All this follows rules of inheritance. The concept of inheritance is given by a great scientist, Gregor Mendel. Let's know some interesting about Mendel. Mendel was educated in monastery and went on to study science and mathematics at the University of Vienna. Failure in the examination for a teaching certificate did not suppress his zeal for scientific quest. He went back to his monastery and started growing peas. Many other had studied the inheritance of traits in peas and other organisms earlier. But Mendel blended his knowledge of science and mathematics and was the first one to keep count of individuals exhibiting a particular trait in each generation. This helped him to arrive at the law of inheritance that we discussed in the main text. He studied on pea plants, scientific name is Pisum sativum. Now the question arises why he studied on pea plants only? The reason is there is a lot of variation in pea plants. For example, some plants are tall while some are dark. Seeds of some plants are yellow while in some they are green. Flowers of pea plants are again can be violet or white. There some other variations also that can be seen in the table. So these variations are important for Mendel to do experiments. Another important reason for selecting the pea plant is the plant grows very fast. So it was helpful for Mendel to do experiment in generations. So with this, I have to pause the session for today. Let's do a quick revision of what we learned. Variations play a vital role in the survival of living organisms. Inherited traits can be transferred from parents to progeny while acquired traits should be learned. Genes work in pair and there is a different pair of genes for different traits. We will continue this topic in the next session. Till that time, you have to search for answer to some questions. Question number one. If a trait A exists in 10% of a population, of an asexually reproducing species and a trait B exists in 60% of the same population, which trait is likely to have arisen earlier? Question number 2. How does the creation of variation in a species promote survival? So we will meet in the next session. Thank you.